Praise the Lord. Thank you, worship team. You know, it is good for us to be here. Well, that's Matthew 17, 4. That's what Peter said. It is good for us to be here. Uh, this is when they were on the mountaintop and Jesus was transfigured before their very eyes. Uh, Peter shouted out, it is good for us to be here. And there's no better place to be than in the presence of of the Lord. And tonight we have a message for you. But before we go into the message, I'm going to read uh, off our prayer request. We're going to pray. We're going to pray not only for the needs that we have, but we're going to pray for all of you. We want to thank you for your support, uh, your tithes, your offerings, and, and all that you've done to support us during this year. We're coming upon a year uh, having been secluded because of these uh, COVID restrictions. Praise God that uh, this seems to be coming to an end. So continue to pray and uh, we'll see a breakthrough real soon. Tonight we want to pray for Susan Gianelli. We want to pray for Kenny, Wilford Jr., Tina. We want to pray for Marlene and Alicia. God is doing great things in her life. Angel, um, Esther's daughter, we want to pray for her for healing. And Machi, also for healing. We also want to pray for Richard Barfus for guidance and also his family, just that God would move in his situation, open up new doors. Also for Sophia and Eileen's family and for Mark for direction. Also for Esther and her siblings, that God would move and touch them and bring about a, a unity and, and peace. And also for Ricardo and Mabel, we want to lift them up and their family, their children to the Lord this evening. We want to pray also tonight for Christopher, his salvation. Amen. We want to lift him up before the Lord and comfort uh, for several families, for Emily and her family who have experienced loss. Also for Andrea, we want to lift her up. She lost her husband. We just want to pray that God's comfort would be with them. And also the uh, uh, Delmira and her family, we want to pray and lift them up before the Lord. So will you join me tonight as we pray for these needs? Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we bring all of these needs before you this evening. Lord, we, we, we declare with Peter that it is good for us to be here. It is good for us to gather in the presence of the Lord. It is good for us to hear what you desire to say to us. But we come tonight with needs. We come tonight with burdens. We bring before you those that are hurting. We bring before you those that have experienced loss, my God, for various reasons. Those, Father God, that are asking for guidance and direction. So tonight we pray for Susan and Kenny, for Wilford Jr. and Tina. We lift up Mar lean to you and Alicia to you angel Lord God and Machi for healing in their lives that you would touch them that you would bring about my God a, a complete resolve by God in their physical bodies that you would bring about the healing that they need we lift up Richard and Sophia for guidance for Eileen's family and Mark Lord God we lift them before you we pray for Esther and her siblings Lord that you would do a work in that family for Ricardo and Mabel we thank you for their faithfulness and we pray that you would move in their lives bless their family my God their extended family we pray for Christopher my God he would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in his life. Father, touch him where he is. We also want to pray for Delmira and her family. We lift her to you and ask that you would bless her, be with her, comfort her for Emily and that family, Father God, and also for Andrea and her family for the devastating loss that she's experienced, my God, just recently. We lift these needs to you and we ask that you would move by your power, comfort them, touch them, my God. Bring about direction and healing. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, for it's in His name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you this evening. I pray that you enjoy the rest of the service. Hey, Victory Outreach Inglewood, we want to remind you to join us for our weekly Zoom Bible study. Currently, we are going through the Acts of the Apostles, which is also referred to as the Book of Acts. The Book of Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament and tells of the founding of the Christian Church and the spread of its message to the Roman Empire. For more information, scan the QR code displayed on the screen to be directed to our website so you can sign up for the Bible study. Once you fill out the form, one of our church staff members will send you the Zoom meeting ID and password so you can join us for the Bible study. You can also go to our website to sign up as well. And don't forget, we also have our weekly prayer meetings every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. 
You can get the Zoom meeting ID by clicking on the quick response code displayed on the screen or by visiting our website at voinglewood.org. The Bible says in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, that if we give generously and sacrificially, that God will open up the windows of heaven and bless us in unimaginable ways. It's the only time in Scripture where God actually tells people to test Him. Give and see if I don't bless you, God tells His people. Here's a principle from the Bible. Generous giving positions us to receive blessings that we don't even know are waiting for us. So let's trust God and give generously to support our ministry and position yourself to receive a blessing from God. We have made online giving easy. Just click on the quick response code displayed on the screen to be directed to our website to give your tithes or offerings to Victory Outreach Inglewood. You can also visit our website, voinglewood.org, to give online as well. And may God bless you as you give. Hello, welcome. Welcome to Friday night evening service at Victory Outreach Inglewood. We're glad you could join us tonight, and I'm excited to share the word and just sit back, turn up the volume, and be ready to hear God's word. Amen? So we're going to read in the book of 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 5 to 6. Now Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, put himself forward and said, I will be king. So he got chariots and horses ready with 50 men to run ahead of him. His father had never rebuked him by asking, why do you behave as you do? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, tonight I ask for your anointing, Lord, that you will help me to convey your word effectively, Father God. Father, that you will help us, Lord Jesus. And Father God, that your word will bring encouragement, Father God and that we will grow, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So here we have a story, and tonight I want to talk about the D word. But no, we're not going to talk about that loser tonight. We're going to talk about discipline, amen? So here we have King David, who was very old and weak, and he was nearing his last days. And his son, Adonijah, took advantage of his dad's condition and wanted to set himself up as king. And he went and conferred with Joab and Abiah the priest and um, some other leaders. And these leaders, somehow they supported him and went along with his quest to be, to be king. They didn't put him in his place. In other words, they went along with his shenanigans. And so he did it, and he didn't invite Zadok, Benaniah, or Nathan the prophet, because he knew they were going to come against him and tell him a truth. Amen? Adonijah went, started sacrificing animals, started organizing groups, and even had a banquet, invited all his brothers to come. And David's son, Solomon, was promised to be the next king. But here we see that Adonijah decided to take over and set himself up as king and parade around like he was the king already. Now Nathan was bothered by this, so he went and he ratted him out. He didn't go to King David, but he went and he ratted him out to Bathsheba. And Bathsheba was Solomon's mom. And so Bathsheba was concerned. And she went before King David and reminded him, didn't you promise that Solomon would become king? And so right then and there, King Solomon was crowned and declared king so that Adonijah wouldn't have the upper hand. Now, after uh, um, King Solomon became king, Adonijah, well, he saw his loss. But he tried one more time, sneaky way, to ask his brother 
for a special request. He asked for Abishag, the Shunammite, to be given as his wife to him. Now Sol Solomon was incensed by this, and he thought, well, this guy really has nerve. Now he's asking for, the, for Abishag as his wife, and this incensed Solomon, and he had him killed. So Adonijah did not become king, and this resulted in his death. Now, I see a pattern here, because David's other son that, that was before Adonijah, Absalom, also to try, tried to take over and went against David, King David, and tried to have him killed his own dad, and Absalom in the end was killed also. And it seems to me that King David, maybe he was teaching them how to, about, about how to be warriors and how to do other things, but he somehow he dropped the ball in teaching them discipline, and um, it ended in death. And... In Proverbs 13, 24 says, whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Now, I thank God I had a mom, even though she was a single mom, that she taught us discipline. You could say I was raised by the chancla, also known as the slipper. And I remember growing up in New York, and even though she was a single mom, she taught us discipline. In fact, when she went around and gave us a look and went like this, that meant wait till you get home. And we knew that we better straighten up or we had something coming when, when we got home. I'll never forget in first grade, I was in school in New York, and I stopped doing my homework. And I guess the teacher contacted my mom. And one day I'm in the cafeteria eating lunch. And uh, I look up, and there's my mom with a belt waving it at me. I was so embarrassed. And that stayed in my head, that image. I went straight to college. Never again <laughs> did I want to experience that, that my mom showing up with a belt. I thought for sure she was going to whoop me in front of everybody, but she didn't. All she had to do was show me that belt, and I received what she was trying to tell me. <laughs> Amen? But see, here, uh, King David had the opportunity to disciple his kids, to teach them wrong from right, but somehow he didn't, and both his kids ended up dead. You know, he, he lacked in that area. And tonight, you know, since we're talking about the theme of family, I want to talk about discipline in the family and us ourselves. And um, in um, Proverbs 19.18, it says, Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. So when you spare the discipline, in other words, you're participating in their death. David, King David, participated in their death by not teaching them discipline. Amen? Children are born with a need for correction. When they're babies, they learn that when they cry and you pick them up, they learn that real easy. So every time they cry, they expect you to pick them up. And... Parents are expected to lovingly but firmly train children in the ways of wisdom. It sets the course of their entire lives. Now, raising kids does not come with a manual. And, but we have the Bible to teach us, to teach them. Amen? And even though we can train them up in the ways of the Lord, there's no guarantees. Our children may turn away from God, but they will return to, to what, what they know. Discipline can be preventative, supportive, and corrective. 
David here did not prevent their death. He wasn't supporting the way he should have, and he wasn't correcting them. So David lost two sons because of a lack of discipline. And today, you know, we are parents, we're coming up against so many things that are competing for our kids' attention with all the social media. And we have to be privy and, and know that we, you know, I know my kids, when, when the cell phones came out, they wanted cell phones. And we said, no, you don't need a cell phone. And we put our foot down. Now, when they went to junior high and we needed to pick up and drop off, then we got them, but with, with limits. They had limited minutes on their phones. <laughs> Amen. And so in, in, in this story, we see an example also of what would happen to us spiritually if we're not disciplined. Amen. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 25 to 27 about running the race. We're running a race to get to heaven. And it says, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So Paul disciplined himself and you know, he beat his flesh. As long as we're in this flesh, we're going to have to fight it. And so we need to discipline ourselves to fight the flesh. You know, the flesh is always trying to rise up. And so we need to learn discipline. Amen? And we need to be open to correction. We need to be discipled and, and held accountable. I can tell you so many times, you know, in my 30 years of teaching, I've had parents come in and they tell me, I don't know what to do with my son. I don't know what to do with my daughter. They don't listen. And I tell them, you are the parent. You can discipline them. And so I have to counsel them on how to discipline their kids. But meanwhile, you know, they're not always going to be in the classroom. So the parents are going to have to learn how to deal with them. And so today we are living under God's grace, but sooner or later he's going to deal with us. And we have some stories in the Bible where God disciplined them. We have Jonah who didn't want to go to Nineveh, and God sent a big fish to swallow him up so that he could be obedient. We have David with Bathsheba, um, he had an affair with her and then had her husband killed. Well, she conceived and, and got pregnant, but the child paid the price because the child didn't live. We have Samson who, who had the power and, and he wasn't supposed to drink wine or cut his hair. And he didn't even realize that the presence of the Lord had left him and he was captured. Then we have Ananias and Sapphira who wanted to sell some property and then decided to keep some money back. And, and they lied, and God dealt with them. They dropped dead. Amen? And so this thing of discipline is important in our lives, in raising our kids, in finishing our walk, in our ministry, it all requires discipline. Like right now, we've been going through this pandemic. We've been on lockdown. We haven't been able to come to church. But it takes discipline. And I hope you are reading your Bible. I hope you are praying because it takes discipline. And it's, it's a lot different, you know, watching uh, on, on YouTube. But you know what? It's what we have for now. But we need to be disciplined. Are you still praying? You know, before it was, oh, I don't have time to pray. I'm too busy. 
But now we have the time. So are you praying? Are you reading your Bible? Are you going to Bible study online? Are you going to prayer online? You know, it takes discipline. And um, I thank God for, you know, our pastors and for those that have taught me discipline, how to be a disciplined um, Christian. And, you know, that's why we need more disciplers, people who would disciple others. You know, I'm thankful. I, I love to disciple women. And I love to see what God does in their lives and how it shapes them and molds them. Amen? And so it's important in our walk to be disciplined. You know, it takes discipline. I remember when I went to college, it took discipline for me to take time to study while I was young. Everybody was out partying, and every weekend I'd spend my time studying. It took discipline. Amen? In our jobs, it takes discipline as well. In our ministry, it takes discipline as well. We, we have to be disciplined, and we have to discipline, discipline others as well and let them know, hey, you're not walking the right way or you're not going the right way. We need to be interveners and let them know. We can't let them go like David let his sons go and they're running around you know, doing things they, they shouldn't have, have been doing. And I thank God that, you know, when I had my kids, I became saved because I was able to teach them as I was learning, and I was able to raise them up. And, you know, we have the teen years to go through, and now they're adults. And, um, you know, the best way that they could learn discipline as well is by watching you, your exampleship. It speaks volumes, because if you're speaking it and you're not acting, then they're not going to receive it. They're going to call you on it. Practice what you preach. Amen? And um, discipline is important. We need the discipline. And, you know, God is faithful, and, and he, you know, he's so gracious to us. But we need to learn discipline and be disciplined. Allow others, you know, to correct us. You know, if a brother or sister tells you, hey, you're not doing this right, or, you know, be open, receive it. But what happens? We become stubborn, and we get offended, and I'm not talking to that brother, or I'm not talking to that sister. But the same thing with God. If God speaks something to you, are you going to tell him, I'm mad at God, I'm not going to receive anything from him? No, God is watching, and he will use others to shape us and mold us along the way. And um, we need to be open for discipline. We need to be humble. We need to humble ourselves. If God is going to change us and transform us, he's going to use other people along our lives and along our path. Amen? And it's something that we need, because if not, we'll end up like Absalom and Adonijah. And, you know, I've seen people that have stepped away, you know, from God, you know, people that have been in the men's home, that because they didn't want to be disciplined, they want, didn't want to follow the rules, they left. And, you know, some of them died and didn't make it. So we need to take it seriously, because... Discipline will guide us and mold us and shape us so that we could be productive and effective. And if we're going to work in ministry and we're going to minister to others, then we need to be disciplined our, ourselves so that we could teach others what we've learned. Like I said, you know, actions speak louder than words. And by your fruit, you will be known. So consider it. And, you know, allow it to, to happen in your life. Amen? And so tonight, um, there are some things we can do for our families. You know, the men, we are, you're supposed to be the priests of the home. And I see that King David, he was the king, but not the priest of his home because he didn't minister to his kids like he should have. Amen? And we need to seek God for, for raising our kids, for direction, for guidance, for wisdom, 
And it's all in the Bible, you know, Proverbs, Psalms, and different stories in the Bible that can help us reach our kids. We also need to teach them and disciple them. You know, our kids, when we have children, that's our first ministry right there. And, um, you know, kids are watching because my kids, you know, have asked me, you know, how do you deal with life now that they're adults and things are changing? You know, how do you deal with all these responsibilities? And, you know, I tell them, I'm in prayer. I'm reading my word because that's the way I'm going to make it. Amen? Even about tithing when they were little um, and they would get their birthday money or, or presents, you know, it's like, okay, you have to tithe some to God from that money. And they would do it wholeheartedly. Sometimes they would give it all to God. And we taught them that. And they've seen us, you know, when money has been tight, they've seen us that we've still been faithful. We're still tithing. So that way when we're no longer around, you know, those things that they've learned from us will help them to be effective in life. Amen? And in our walk, we need to humble ourselves. We need God's help. You know, we can't say I have it all together because we don't, you know. And, and it's going to take a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting, and also allowing others to speak into our lives and, and to be humble. You know, be open to discipline. Accept correction. You know, because sometimes we could be like kids too. And, um, you know, somebody can point it out, and we don't even see that. But somebody else, you know, that cares about us and wants us to grow spiritually, they will point it out. And, you know, be thankful for those people. You know, say, say thank you and accept the correction. Amen? So tonight I want to pray for you as we bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we thank you for your word tonight, Lord Jesus. We need discipline, more discipline, Father God. And Lord, help us to raise our kids disciplined, Father God, to teach them the ways according to your word, Father God. And Lord, we just thank you for the work you're going to do in our lives, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord. And, and if some of you have have um, let go in, in praying and, and reading your Bible. I pray that you will stir up their hearts, Father God, and that they will get a fresh fire in their hearts to seek you and to read your word, Father God. Lead us and guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a good evening. Thank you.